So um, this uh, this week's field trip is with Dave Feldman, who is another uh, complexity explorer advocate. He teaches a fabulous course on, uh, well, he has taught a fabulous course on chaos and fractals, and the current course that's going on right now is fractals and scaling. And Dave is at the College of the Atlantic, and he's agreed to talk to us a little bit more about fractals. In particular, Dave, what are you going to tell us about? Well, I thought I would talk about um, one way to make a fractal, which is a, a model called diffusion-limited aggregation. So I guess in your course, you're seeing fractals emerging from dynamical systems. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. Right. And so those, as everybody knows, are these nice deterministic, repetitious sort of things, and they make these beautiful fractals. And what I like about this model is it is a stochastic model. So as we'll see, it's not deterministic, um, but it produces these really interesting and and beautiful forms. When I was thinking about it this morning, I realized that um, this brings me way back because my undergraduate thesis, I chose to learn about snowflake formation. Hmm. And so this is actually sort of one of the first sort of interesting fractal models I've sort of sort of bumped up against. So here's the, so here's the idea behind um, fusion limited aggregation. So it's a model for how things might stick together. So let's say we've got, um, in the context of snowflakes, we have a lot of water droplets and then one really cold thing here. And that cold thing acts as a nucleating agent. Things can um, freeze around it. So I've got this really cold bit of dirt up in the sky. And all these water droplets are moving around at random. They do a random walk. And when they reach that little piece of dirt, they stick. And so things slowly start to aggregate. And again, they're just random walking, complete random motion. And then the question is, well, what, what shape are we going to get? And you might think, well, we're just going to get some like really boring blob. Things just sort of <laughs> stick together. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that um, that's not what happens. And one gets these really beautiful dendritic fractal structures. And if you do it on a hexagonal lattice, like crystallized water, ice, then you get these, these really nice snowflakes. So what happens is... Um, a blob starts to form, but then just at random, there we go, just at random, there'll be a little larger peak. And that peak now it acts as a um, sort of like an attractor, not in the dynamical sense. Mm -hmm. But particles moving in are more likely to hit that peak that's, that's jumping, that's a little bit above the surface. Just basically, so that, you could even think about that from a perimeter argument. Just it adds to the perimeter, and so that, that increment to the perimeter attracts more? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so, yeah, so you get these sort of instabilities, and then you get these sort of long, dendritic, finger-like things. And once we have a shape like this, these are going to continue to grow, because a random walking particle, it's, going to, it's very rare that it's going to make it all the way up mm -hmm. in here. And so you get these... Uh, like fjords and fingers off of which are fingers off of which are fingers, <laughs> and they produce these really really nice fractal uh, fractal shapes. Um, the dimensions been calculated for these things using the box counting dimension or the capacity dimension, and I think the result is about one point seven zero hmm. plus or minus. Mm -hmm. So between one and two dimensions, um, and yeah, and there are these these really fun shapes. They're used to describe snowflakes. Um, all sorts of aggregative growth, um, electro deposition, um, other other sorts of structures, corals, how corals form mm -hmm. also are used for these things. But it's it, to me, it's just a nice, simple model where you can get um, these beautifully intricate structures, fractal structures, from a comp that's driven by a, a random noise. But it's still a dynamical process because it's kind of a snowballing, pardon the pun, a snowballing effect. So there is dynamics in this formation of this fractal. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's one of the things I think, it's, to me, is a common lesson about the study of fractals and the study of dynamics. And that's simply that dynamics matter, right? And so there's a line, I don't know who um, said it first, I've seen it attributed to Richard Levins, that things are snapshots of processes. Mm hmm so if we see a tree or an attractor um, or, or a snowflake, we might think, that's incredibly complicated. But if we think of it, and, and we see it as a sort of static thing, a picture on our screen or a tree out the window, but if we think about the process that it took to grow that, mm -hmm. then it becomes much more explainable. And to me, that's sort of one of the big lessons of, of chaos, and I think of fractals as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a nice note to end with. 
So what else are you working on these days? Oh, boy, what am I working on? Um, you know, most of, most of my work has been on this, um, on this new MOOC on fractals and scaling, which is really fun since, as you know, you think you understand a topic and then you try to explain it through videos to thousands of people and mm -hmm. you find out what you don't know and um, you meet people all from all over the world. And so I've been enjoying that. Um, and actually one of my next projects after this is to um, start a textbook with a colleague here on sustainable energy. Hmm. So very, uh, a very different sort of project from the chaos and fractal stuff, but a, an interdisciplinary course that the two of us have taught for a while. And um, it combines physics and math and engineering and financial mathematics. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a combination not found anywhere else. So stay tuned. Two or three years, that'll be on the presses. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Appreciate sure. it. Sure. Take Thanks, care. Bye-bye.